Panther fans, get ready for a deep dive because the film Don't, Don't Lie. Oh man, you guys right. are you guys are getting good at Speaks that. Speaks the truth. This, Speaks the truth. This is Mike Kraft along with Panther legends Mike Rucker and Kevin Donnelly. And guys, I, I'm just so excited to get together with you guys every week to get your perspective because I respected you guys tremendously as a player. And now you've become quality broadcasters. <laughs> Learning from the best, Mikey. <laughs> Learning from the best. <laughs> well, anyway, we are going to break down this Panthers matchup against the Lions as the Cats go on the road for the second leg of a back-to-back, but more importantly, four out of five games on the road. Tell me, as a player, guys, what was the challenge of being on the road every week? Uh, I mean, first and foremost, it's being in that hostile environment. Uh, you know, each and every week in the NFL, those fans are going to turn out. They're going to be loud, and they're going to try and disrupt you. They know any advantage they can get at home is uh, is what that home team needs. So, you know, going from that environment in Foxborough, now going up to Detroit, that team's playing well. They're 3-1. and one. You know, as a player, you really got to get that mindset that you're going into a, an environment that's going to be brutal. And, uh, you know, with the, several of those kind of coming up in a row, it can you make you it can make you battle tested, and so I think it's good that what they did in Foxborough coming off of that, the one advantage as a player is okay, we're going right back into that thing. We knew the mindset that it took. We got to replicate that when we head into Detroit. Ruck, let me get your opinion on this because when I went around the locker room this week, I couldn't get anybody to bite on the validation story that you have to go out after a big win and get a win to validate the previous week win. Sort of sounds like deja vu all over. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but what's your opinion on that? Um, I, when I was listening, I just felt like I saw a team that's been there before, and this wasn't a surprise. And and the chips were stacked against them. No one were picking them really to win, but themselves. And so for them to go up there and 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 take I don't want to say steal a win, but take a win up there in New England was huge. Uh, you know. Coach would always say that when you go on the road, you have to win two of the three phases, and you definitely have to pack your special teams and you got to pack your defense. And that's exactly what they did up in New England, and they brought their offense too, and they, and they took what they needed to take. I, I truly believe that this team, when they say, hey, 24 hours and we move on, I think that they did that. And that shows me that they're a veteran team that has been there. They're not surprised to win some big games. They They expect to win – where maybe another team would say, hey, you know, and, and really take this and gloat on it, but then the next week they they hit a hiccup because they're still win, thinking about the win from the week before. So that's something that I really looked at when I was listening to their, their interviews, and they really moved on. Well, I can tell Panther fans one thing, that the way this team practiced today out there on the practice field, you could see that there was not, not a, a, there was an air of confidence and they were going about their business like they know, okay, yeah, we're right back to work, like you said, moving forward to this game. Now, talking about going into the Lions Den, because more so than any other week, I had to watch a lot of film to really get a gauge on this Lions team, just don't know them. And I'm sure the Panthers have to do that too, don't they? Yeah, they do. And, you know, obviously with, with Stafford, uh, you know, he got some some – Big money this this offseason, this year, and uh, rightfully so because he is a good young quarterback in this league. Straight and cash, homie. Straight cash wallet to the bottom is line. Wallet full. You know? <laughs> What's in his wallet? <laughs> we all know. <laughs> and, and he is – he's when we turned on the film, you see why. You see some of the throws that he's making, and, and one in particular, the Vikings, they have a two-deep safety, and the safeties are on the numbers. And, you know, there's – there's, uh, you know, they have trips to the left, and you know they send two guys and they send one guy to the right. So it was a three-man route where they dropped all their guys, and and for him to have the patience, the offensive line gave him the time. They had one-on-ones up front, gave Stafford the time to make that throw in a tough spot where the Vikings should have known where the ball was going, mm -hmm. right? And and there are little mishaps, and he made them pay. Yeah, and I tell you what what makes it um, all kind of work together is Jim Bob Cooter, that offensive coordinator. I love the name, my man Jim Duck, Bob. Duck right, Dynasty, right? He'll throw, yeah, he'll throw <laughs> some um, some wrinkles in there that uh, you know will really help the offense uh, in terms of making the defense play honest. And in one particular play, it wasn't a big run, 
but it was a reverse to Golden Tate and one of their big playmakers on offense, their leading receiver right now. He's a guy that you got to keep an eye on, and instead of going de- down deep down the field or a short pass, something like that, they run the reverse. And the reverse, it just gets a few yards, but it's a positive play. But those are the things that you can throw in there, sprinkle in, that you're not riding everything on Stafford and what he's doing uh, and just gives that uh, Golden Tate an opportunity to maybe make a play. It makes you play defense sideline to sideline and be aware of everything that's going on. Well, one of the guys I I liked when I saw him on film was Amir Abdullah. And I I remember when he came out, Nebraska, right? Nebraska, red and white. Somewhere your buddy Mike Minner just stood up and saluted. (laughs) He was a positive thing. We need some more we positive got, there. Hey, we got Eric Ebron over there too. He's a target. Okay, okay, you know, but you know, right, if we want to throw right. that in. Look, we're gonna y'all gonna wear your college sweaters. And, but uh anyway, when I looked at him on film, the bottom line with him is very quick, very elusive, and there were times in that game when it looked like Minnesota was gonna take away every gap in the building. Mm-hmm. And he still was able with his quickness to bounce outside. So he's the type of guy Sort of like we saw with Shady McCoy, that you, you got to keep tabs on it. You got to keep him inside those tackles. Uh, that will be fun to watch. Let me ask you this: in relation to last week's game, we're moving forward. But bottom line, what did you see in that game that should be a key to victory this week? I, th- I think um, the defense showed up and really created a lot of pressure for Tom Brady. But the one thing that really stood out to me was Cam Newton. Uh, I felt like he he was back like to his rookie second year in the league to where he was running, the energy, when he gets a first down, he's pointing, when he gets a touchdown, he's doing his thing. And I think this offense really feeds off him and his personality out there when things are really going well. The one thing, Kevin, that I really saw that I was I kind of brought a smile, I was like, aha, is when he rolled off the right tackle and slid off, and, and uh, he, he slid. He slid. We're back in the day. That's right. He was running. He was plowing people over. But now that veteran, you get a couple of nicks, and now you're starting to listen, and you were sliding, which I thought was really, really great. Well, and I thought uh, kind of tag-teaming on that was uh, just the decision-making and then the game plan that they put in put Cam Newton in such great situations to make plays in certain situations. I think when you look first in the passing game with his receivers, uh, really got uh, Ed Dixon involved early, uh, one of those plays – uh, early in that game, just he slipped down the middle of the field, got behind the linebacker, knew where to cut in front of the safety to really make an easy pass for Cam Newton to get that completion. And then with Ed Dixon also, he rolled out one time. I love seeing him roll out because it gives that run-pass option. But, um, again, Ed Dixon's able to kind of just uh, come off the line of scrimmage, roll out to the flat. He's actually in motion and just goes right out to the flat and what an easy completion. And these are things a couple of weeks ago, you know, overthrowing guys or not quite getting yep, it to yep. a catchable spot. This time it's right on the money. He's able to get some yards after the catch. And, and of course, you got to look at the receivers, Funchess and Kelvin Benjamin. And they put in some great performances. And with Kelvin, uh, just he's almost unstoppable when he runs, uh, say, a quick slant over the middle and his body type and the the wingspan that he has, he's able to make those catches or a little bit deeper, you know, kind of a combination of a deeper slant or a deep in, a dig route where that one's going over the middle. And the one in particular I liked was it was a tough third down situation or uh, they needed that first down and Kelvin knew exactly where the yard marker was. So did Cam. He runs it right to that, right at the line. And you think, oh, he might get it, he might not. Hey, this guy's 6'5", 240. Yeah, that's right. He catches that ball on that line and falls forward for about another two yards. Really good plays. Mixed it up a whole lot. And I'll let you comment on this, Mike. How about the screen? The oh, screen to Fozzie Whitaker. We, we what had, a play. We had so much fun, Kevin and I, breaking that down on our game day show uh, on Sunday night. And it just uh, nothing like a good screen. And, uh, I mean, we talked at length about that that whole situation, but it echoed back to what you, we all talked about here at this desk about the way they were using Christian McCaffrey and what that would do to opposing defenses. And it speaks to that because all week we know Bill Belichick had that little laser pointer and put that red dot on Christian McCaffrey and said, we have to know where this guy oh, is. That's right. Is that a good Bill Belichick? <laughs> I think it's hard to imitate. He barely talks. Does he talk like that? He's probably, hey, uh, hey, it sounded good. (laughs) I have tremendous respect for Coach Belichick and that organization, as I know this this whole franchise does. But it 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 hurt him. 
do. Because they had so much attention on him. And you talk about the screen, the other pass we talked about with with uh, uh, Benjamin was they were in a bunch, and they ran off guys to the inside. And Kelvin Benjamin, who is, is, is huge, just wanders out. Nobody even right. saw him. It's like, how do you miss this guy? That is, you know, yeah. six five, you know, two hundred and forty pounds, and and how does he slip out un, unnoticed? Again, it yeah. goes back to the McCaffrey effect. Yeah, and that that was a great effect. But I want I want to give a shout out because Coach was adamant after that game about talking about the job that his coaches did, dealing with all the injuries and 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 really challenges during that game because, I mean, you had the the two turnovers. The defense proved they had the offenses back. The offense proved that they could weather the storm. And you had the injuries in the defensive backfield. And we actually had Curtis full of Mike for that game, the uh, defensive back coach. And he had to deal with all of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they went to their uh, – Colin Jones comes in. He's the second guy to step in to Kurt Coleman's spot. And that's not easy. That's going to be a, an, an issue this week. It, it is. And I think you go back to the scouting department and – you know, that's what the preseason is about is getting guys that if someone gets nicked up that they can step in. And uh, when you have guys that you find like Colin Jones and, and some of these backups that when their number is called, they were thrown in there and they picked up the slack to help get a victory. And I think that's huge. And that's something that's going to be a key this week is these guys now are going to have to step in and look and watch game field because they might be getting a lot more time than they expected than just being thrown in in the game last week. Well, Mike, I can I can add on with the, the backup situation and guys in reserve roles. Mike and I were doing the, the TV broadcast for the preseason games, and Steve Wilkes, the defensive coordinator, comes in and really made some points that during camp you're trying to find those backups, and his words exactly were, you're only as good as your backups. Oh, we know that. That's and so true. there's so many starters you're dependent on but you're going to have to call on these guys, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams, at certain times during the season, and they need to be able to fill in just like the starters. And that defense didn't really miss a beat with those couple of injuries that you're talking about, and, and a big one with Kurt Coleman going down. Thankfully, it's not real, real serious, but uh, they're going to have to continue that play if the Panthers are going to have some success. That's true, and that they will need all hands on deck as they travel up to Detroit. Uh, to face the Lions. And, guys, we are out of time. Awesome job today. Remember, fans, if it happens inside the lines, we will see it here on All 22 because the, the film, film don't lie. lie. See you next week.